Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to overview the architecture of a serverless web crawler that's built on AWS. Uh, so this is a really great project for those of you that are trying to get more hands-on experience with AWS. And I've already recorded the part where I've implemented this, so I'll be publishing that video shortly after I publish this video. So you'll be able to follow along with the implementation as well. Um, so before we get into the architecture here of the project, I first want to talk about uh, very briefly kind of what we're trying to build and what motivated me to build this. Uh, so I recently subscribed to this uh, trial for this website here that lets you crawl your website to figure out all the domains that are connected to a particular root URL or a root website. Um, so as you can see here, the, the website that I submitted is my website, so bebetterdive.com. And how this tool basically works is that it figures out how many URLs within your domain, like your within your root domain here, so bebetterdev.com slash something. So it figures out what else is connected to this root URL. So if you visited this, this website and you know there's 10 different links that are on that website, this tool will basically discover all of those different links and all of the connections of those ones, so on and so forth. It'll keep things to this root URL, so it won't go off to like other websites, but it'll just tell you the general connectivity of your website. So that's the idea here, and I thought that this would be an interesting little project that uh, I can try to build on AWS so that I can figure out this kind of information on my own and just kind of as a general learning experience. So now let's move back to the architecture to talk about in general how this is going to work. Um, so we're going to be using lambdas, a SQS queue, and a DynamoDB table. And more specifically, we're going to have two different lambdas. This lambda here is going to be responsible for initiating the crawl. And this lambda down here is going to be responsible for actually doing the processing. So um, using a HTTP library to make a call to the website, uh, parse all of the contents of the links inside that HTML and extracting all that information out. Uh, we're going to be using Python and Beautiful Soup in order to do that. Uh, and also this lambda is going to be responsible for saving the visited URLs to our visited URLs table. And it's also going to be responsible for in queuing more URLs to crawl uh, at a later process. Uh, so to run through this from start to end, how it's going to work is that there's going to be a person or some kind of maybe an API later on to um, kind of initiate this process. But in the beginning, it's just going to be me that's invoking a Lambda function. And we're going to start the crawl with a root URL. Uh, so I'm going to provide it with bebetterdev.com. Uh, so that's the first step. Uh, the second step is that since it's the first invocation, we need to generate a run ID. A run ID is just a globally unique uh, string. Uh, I'm going to use a UUID in this case, which is like a 24 digit alphanumeric random string. And the reason that that's necessary in the beginning here is because if we want to run a crawl on beabetterdev.com a second time later, we need to have a way to have duplicate records in our table. And our run ID is going to be our composite key. You'll see um, this will make a little bit more sense when we get into the actual project itself. And then we're also going to pass along that run ID into the, the crawler itself. Again, more on that a little bit later. Uh, so we're gonna save in this uh, visited URLs table, we're gonna save that URL, which is gonna be bebetterdev.com. We're gonna save that run ID, which is gonna be randomly generated here. We're gonna save a date, which is also a, just a timestamp of when the crawl is occurring the referring URL, so who referred me to this URL? This will make more sense when we get down to the other crawler here, which kind of does the actual work. Um, so in the beginning, the referring URL will be null because I am the one that's initiating it. So it's always null uh, on the first run here for the root URL. And then you just give it the root URL so you know what the parent is for this whole relationship. Uh, okay, so all of that's going to be saved into a record in DynamoDB. The next step is we need to queue that URL for crawling. So we need to send a message into our uh, pending crawl queue here that is going to be responsible for containing all the pending crawls that we need to perform in this run. Now, some of you may be wondering, why are you saving the URL to the visited URL table if you haven't visited it yet? And the answer is that by proactively marking our URL as visited is an optimization technique that prevents a website from being visited multiple times. More on this later on. 
Now attached to that is going to be another Lambda function. And this Lambda function is going to be polling for messages constantly. Now when this Lambda function finds a message, it's going to move on to the fifth step. So within that message, it's gonna contain the URL. So in the first case, it's gonna be beabetterdev.com. So we're gonna visit beabetterdev.com using your HTTP library of choice. And we're going to extract all of the anchor tags out and the link tags out. And so we're gonna get a basically a list of URLs that are on a particular web page. Now, the next thing that we need to do so that we don't double process because, you know, a web page can be referenced from N other web pages, right? So um, we don't want to visit a web page 10 times if it's being pointed to by 10 different URLs. We only want to visit it one time. So in order to ensure that we don't double visit a website, we're going to query our DynamoDB table for all of the websites that are found on this URL. And so this is in a Dynamo table for now. I'll probably want to put this in some kind of cache uh, on local uh, just to speed this up. And, you know, Dynamo to be a cost per read. So this isn't the most efficient thing. By the way, this whole thing is probably not the most efficient way, but this is just a way that I thought makes sense and it's good practice for someone. And so anyways, we're going to query DynamoDB to figure out what are all the ones that we've already visited out of this list. Now, it may be the case that we visited everything. In that case, we're done right? There's nothing left to do. But if there are some that we have not yet visited, in other words, if we get five URLs back that are linked to this website, and then we query Dynamo, and there's only four of them that are in there, that means that four of them are visited and only one needs to be visited. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark that unvisited URL as visited in Dynamo, and then we're going to unqueue it for processing a little bit later on. So that was a little bit of a mouthful, uh, may have been kind of a little bit confusing for some of you, but let me kind of walk you through what this will look like using a, an actual example here. Okay, so we have beabetterdev.com over here, and let's just assume for simplicity's sake that beabetterdev.com only links to three other articles or other web pages. And these, in this case, they're kind of categories. And then uh, the slash DynamoDB URL is pointing to a slash streams tutorial. And the streams tutorial points to the slash Lambda category. So this is a directed graph that does have a cycle. So uh, how is this going to work? So we're gonna start the crawl with the root URL. So we're gonna start with the root URL. We're gonna save the, the URL in here. In other words, we're gonna mark this URL as visited. Great, now we're going to queue this URL for crawling. So I'm gonna make that green to, or yeah, green, there we go, uh, to signal that this is now queued for crawling. Perfect, so now this Lambda function is gonna pick up that beabetterdev.com message. It's going to visit beabetterdev.com and it's gonna discover these three URLs that are on it, right? So it's gonna discover slash s3 slash DynamoDB and slash Lambda. It's going to query DynamoDB to see, do we have a record of S3, DynamoDB, or Lambda in this database? We're gonna return an empty list because there's only one record in, in this database so far. It's the bebetterdev.com one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark these URLs as visited, and then we're going to unqueue them for processing. So we're gonna change them to green. And then we're gonna repeat the process for these three guys. We're gonna uh, have these three messages in the queue. This Lambda function is gonna pick up all of them. We're gonna kind of visit this URL, see if there's anything on it. There's nothing else pointing out of it, so we're done. Uh, we're gonna visit the DynamoDB one. We're gonna see that we have this link connected to it, so we're gonna unqueue that into the queue. And then we're gonna do the same for Lambda. So Lambda is gonna be done. The only remaining task is this uh, final one here. So we're gonna pick this message up from the queue. We are going to scan its contents. We are going to see that it points to the slash lambda path because that's what it's inside the HTML. However, when we query our DynamoDB table here, we're already gonna see that the slash lambda URL has already been visited. So this one is effectively done and our run ID is done. Now, the one thing that I was thinking about in terms of maybe like a problem with this architecture or a, or a challenge that I'm gonna have to solve is how do you know when a run is done? Because like you can have a really, really big website with many, many different connections. So what is the signal that indicates that you're done processing here? And so at first I was thinking like, okay, maybe it's the message size of the queue. So maybe we can add like a cron job, like a CloudWatch event that pokes the queue every, 
I don't know, 10 seconds or so and says, is there anything inside of this queue, like any messages that are available? If there are, there's still work to be done. That could be the indicator. Um, but I need to think of something a little bit more um, kind of solid. That's that's not a really good way to do this. It's just kind of a assumption. And there could be many false positives. Maybe when you pull the message for the queue, there's zero messages in there, but there's one that's currently in flight. And, uh, you know, at that point, it may not be done. Maybe that one discovers more URLs here and then it unqueues more. Uh, so that's not necessarily uh, always the best choice. And it may actually give us the wrong answer in some edge cases. Uh, so that's a problem. The other problem is in terms of uh, concurrency. So like... What if you want to build this as a product so you have like many different users that are all submitting different websites all at once? Um, how am I going to not blow up the root URL that I'm trying to visit? Because if you run this with like unlimited concurrency, it's going to smash this website with requests. Actually, that's something that happened to me as I was building this application. I'll probably make a video on that and show you kind of what it did to my website. In so many words, basically it brought the website down. Another problem that I was uh, thinking through is that if we use this singular queue architecture, um, th this doesn't feel like it's the right thing to do here because if you want to make this a kind of software as a service application and you have many users that are submitting um, websites to be crawled up here, what's to stop one user like this guy submitting a url like you know google.com and google.com is like it links to everything else right and so that's kind of like a poison pill if you put a url in here that's like so wide and has so many connections it can cause impact to these other customers that maybe these guys only want to do like a small domain with a couple hundred connections now this google um, kind of insertion into the queue is going to cause all these other urls that need to be visited so ideally it would be nice if um, we can have every user that makes a submission have their own queue and then connect everything after the fact, um, maybe using like some kind of dynamic code, or maybe even it makes sense to put this whole thing in some kind of step function. And, um, you know, in that sense, I'll have a better handle on when the process is done. And I may be able to make a queue like dynamically as part of that step function workflow. Um, but those are some improvements that'll come later. I also want to do something where uh, I have a kind of a dashboard or an aggregate snapshot of all the crawls that are currently running and what are all the connected URLs as they come in. So I'll probably do something a little bit later like that. So uh, stay tuned. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'll put part two on my channel when it's available. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.